Uh, hi all. Um, I normally don't do product reviews, but I want to talk about this brace from Boa Phone. It's called the Value Value Lock Two, and I've been using this a fair bit for patients with um, first MTPJ joint pain. So it's actually a, a bunion brace, but it works fantastic for patients with hallux limitus, um, anyone who's had an osteochondral defect of the um, first metatarsal head, anyone who's had a hyperextension injury, a turf toe, where they've injured the plantar ligaments, um, or have had compression dorsally during that, um, uh, that injury. Uh, I've probably prescribed it about six times now, and the reason being it immobilizes the joint unbelievably well. So when you've got an injured ligament or um, a chondral injury, you want to rest the joint. We could do that by putting the person into a cam walker, but uh, using a cam walker is it's inconvenient for a lot of people. Um, we could immobilize it to a degree with an orthotic and a Morton's, with a Morton's extension, but still they bend through them. Um, they still bend through that extension. Even with a rocker bottom shoe, they will still rock off and bend through the joint. So if you really want to immobilize it, this works. So how? How is it um, structured? So we've got this little clip here, and then they give you this, I don't know, this little thing here. And you use that to pop it open. There we are. Right, so we use this just to pop that open. And it is universal in that it will fit on the right side or the left foot. And then you can change the degrees on how much you want, wherever you want the, the joint angle, you can then position this. So for someone who's had an injury, if this is zero degrees, I usually keep them around the five to 10 degree mark, so about there. So once you've got the angle, you can then pop this back inside. And it's set. Now I'm going to fit this onto Amanda so she can feel what it's like. You can weight bear with this. I've asked uh, the patients uh, who, who have been wearing it if there's been any discomfort around the straps uh, of the midfoot or the hallux, and they haven't had any discomfort at all. We'll fit that over the toe. Then once I've fitted this on, um, I'll get Amanda to walk around and just tell me how much immobilization she's actually getting from the split. So that's how it fits, and once again, it should keep that joint um, pretty rigid. Uh, you do need a shoe that's a little bit wide because you've got this apparatus, so it will poke through the shoe a little bit. Um, but if if it's like a jogger. Um, I haven't had anyone had a problem with that. All right. All right. Yeah. Yep. I mean, how does that feel initially? Um, it feels quite comfortable. Uh-huh. Yeah. And do you think it's restricting joint motion? Yeah. It just feels like a hard split, but it's quite comfortable. All right. Yes. Yeah. So let's put it, let's see if it will fit into a shoe like that. So once again, with, um, ligament injuries, soft tissue injuries, or um, or joints with mild arthritis, we do tend to split these joints. And this is really just like a big toe joint split. So how is it fitting into a shoe like that? Is I'm it surprised too tight? it fit. It's, it's made it tighter. But, but you can actually get it in. Yeah, I can get yeah. it in. So there's usually no problem uh, in a jogger. So walk around for me and just tell me that actually feels really comfortable. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it is splinting the joint. Yeah, right? it splinted the joint. Fantastic. So there you go. So if you've got a first MTP joint injury um, and you need to splint it, um, you can consider using this Valvulock uh, 2 brace. Thanks. Hi all. Um, I wanted to, to go through um, 
an injury that a patient of mine uh, experienced approximately about four to five years ago in the left uh, first metatarsophalangeal joint. Uh, I'm going to get him to explain exactly what happened uh, during that injury and the previous treatments that he's had for this. So, I'll leave it to you. Um, so, I had an injury where um, I fell. Uh, I fell to the ground and basically all my weight was on uh, the big toe at the time. Um, and ever since that injury, I've just been in pain with um, the big toe. Um, um, yeah, uh, like there's times where the pain was uh, like a 10 out of 10 um, and it was hard to walk at times as well, um, yeah. So that injury, when you fell, the joint, the toe bent backwards like that, didn't it? Yes. So you was forced back like that and then you start to develop the pain. And yeah. what was the first treatments that you had for this? Um, so I went to a physio um, and they've done like some like massage jump techniques. Mm -hmm. um, that was ongoing um, for quite a while actually. Um, that would just give like a little bit of like a pain a relief at the time, but then the pain would always come back. Mm -hmm. And you saw a podiatrist as well? Yep. Um, so I seen a podiatrist and that's when they recommended and I got um, orthotics in my shoes. Um, I've actually changed my shoes twice in the last four to five years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And they got you to get a rocker bottom type of shoe too, I think, didn't they? A shoe that rocked a little bit more? Yeah, yeah. And how much relief did you get from the shoes and the orthotics? Um, look, it helped, but it was more like all temporary relief. So mm -hmm. the pain was always still there. The pain was always um, like coming and going. Um, and, then, and then the pain is there. It's, it's quite severe. Like, yeah, 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's, um, you'll put on non steroidal anti-inflammatories, mm -hmm. which, did they do much? Uh, all temporary. So I had, uh, three sets of cortisones, um, and they were only last for like a few months. I was told that, um, it would be a permanent fix, but then, um, it, it, and it wasn't after about three months or four months, it would start to wear off, but mm -hmm. then I would go back and then. I was told again that they like it would be a permanent fix if I have like a second one and a third one, but it didn't happen. Right. Yeah. So guys, they um, there was an intraarticular corticosteroid injection actually into the joint itself. Once again, that was done three times. Um, uh, Mobic was also prescribed. Once again, I think that was temporary. Yeah. And there was uh, relief as well. And, and Panadol osteo at the same time. Um, anything that we've missed? Um, so there was obviously x-rays and uh, CT scans taken yeah, at that time that as well. Um, um, I, I'm a lot of the people who I've seen said um, just to have rest and not to put a lot of pressure on it. Um, and that's what I have been doing. But the pain is just unpredictable. So it will just come and it will go. Um, there's times where if, if I walk to like a park or something, is it going it, it to flare up afterwards? And that's normally like, like the case as well. So... It's very unpredictable, like the pain just comes and it goes, <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. So if we have a look at the joint itself, the amount of dorsiflexion in the joint is perfect. And when you have a look at uh, the x-rays, the x-rays look completely normal. Unfortunately, I was unable to, to get the results from the CT scan, um, but I believe they didn't reveal too much. On assessment, the way I couldn't palpate any pain except when I plantar flexed the hallux and then pushed on the dorsal aspect of the first metatarsal head. So when I got my finger in there, so exposing the dorsal aspect of the first med head, it started, we, we actually got some pain. But there was no pain plantarly or anywhere else. The splint has worked in relieving symptoms. And by how much do you think it's relieved symptoms by? Um... It's basically like a, like a 9 out of 10. Um, in pain relief? Yeah. So I'll put it on nice and tight and then, um, yeah. Yeah, so I wanted to, to video this because everything else failed to relieve symptoms. And then two weeks of using this splint has pretty much taken the pain away by 90%, uh, which is quite significant. 
So I was going to review our, our patient after about six weeks of using the splint. I ended up reviewing him after about two weeks and I was um, quite taken back by how much pain relief that we've had. So I'm going to start using this splint um, for helix limitus um, and helix rigidus applications. So anyone who has big toe joint pain or arthrosis in the joint, this is almost like, well, it's just a fantastic splint in limiting range of motion. Uh, and also, what does this feel like when you're um, when it's inside your shoe and you're walking? Um, at first, it was a bit like difficult to adjust. Um, the shoe becomes a bit more tighter, um, but I think you slowly learn to just sort of like adjust with it. Like you know that it's there. Um, can you walk at a decent pace? Yeah, yeah, I, I can walk in it. Um, like fairly normal, so mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty good. And does it cause you any discomfort anywhere where the straps are or where this is um, adjacent to the, the bone there? Yeah. Or up here, is there any discomfort? Uh, not really. Like I know when I first put it in one of my shoes, um, it was a bit of a tight squeeze, like it didn't really fit that shoe. Um, so I normally try on like another pair of shoes that I have and it, it's pretty okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fantastic. Um, beauty.